It's finally here, one of the most long-awaited returns in Weekly Shonen Jump. It's time for Shiro Utsuzaki, the artist behind Act Age. Now, if you don't know Act Age, that is a title that was being put on same level Jutsu Kaisen and Chainsaw Man during their early years as the three rookies in Jump that were more likely to become the next big pillars of the magazine. You probably are well aware of how big Jutsu Kaisen and Chainsaw Man went on to become in the following years, being two of the biggest titles in the anime and manga industry right now. So, if Hacked Age had the potential to be that big, what happened? Well, something really sad did. Tatsuya Matsuki, the writer of the manga, was caught molesting high school girls, and after his arrest, the manga was promptly cancelled. He was removed from the magazine, the last chapter was actually never even translated officially into English, the second English volume was cancelled even though it was at pre-orders at the time, and the first volume was also removed from print. In the midst of all this controversy, there was a lot of sympathy not only for the victims, but for Usazaki herself. She wasn't at fault, and with this Shonen Jump had just lost one of the better artists running at the time. Although the story and characters of Act Age were pretty great, I think the thing that put it above other acting manga like Oshinoko and even Akana Banashi was the art style. Usazaki knows how to push the expressions of these characters, especially in the eyes, to fully convey the emotion of them. And in doing so, she's also able to show their change in emotions when they step on stage. But after four long years, she is finally back in the magazine with a new partner. Osamu Nishi, the mangaka behind the popular Welcome to the Demon School Hiromakun, which is still running right now on Weekly Shonen Champion. This isn't the first time a mangaka works on two different works from different companies. Just on top of my head, uh, Takiku Hinoue, Boichi, and Ryuei Tamura all did it to some degree, and Osamu Tezuka himself was pretty much doing everything, everywhere, all at once. Those are just names that I remember from the top of my head without doing any actual research on the topic, so I'm sure there's a lot more names. However, what I think is special about Nishi is that not only is he both the artist and the writer of Irumakun, both that and this new manga are going to be weekly series, which is insane for him to be working on two of them. We'll have to see how he managed to work both of them in the long run. That is, if Irumakun isn't planning to end relatively soon. I'm not following the manga, so I don't really know. So, now that we know the two mangaka, what is this new manga and what is it all about? Well, this manga is called Ichi the Witch, not to be confused with Ichi the Killer, and it's about Ichi, which, despite the title, isn't a witch, at least not at a start, rather a hunter that lives in the woods since being abandoned there as a child. Now, Ichi has found civilization back, he lives near a village who buys him food and generally likes him, but he doesn't show any wish to live with them. And we learn that the reason for that is because there's a dormant creature living in the woods that he believes wants to hurt people. However, since the creature is still sleeping, he doesn't want to kill it. He believes that it's wrong to kill anything for reasons other than for food or for self-defense. And in this case, he isn't really defending anything because the creature is asleep. Until it isn't. Yeah, the creature wakes up and it automatically decides to attack the village, as it turns out that this creature is something called magic. You see, magic is alive in this world and it takes forms of these creatures. These creatures tend to represent things and it feels like it's similar to Chainsaw Man in, in a way. We got introduced to some examples like the water magic, the breeze magic, the iceberg magic, and these creatures give challenge to people and those that pass this challenge get the powers and become what it's called witches. The magic in question here is King Huroro, the King Magic. A very well known magic among the witches and one that they've been trying to capture for a long, long time. While its challenge is relatively simple, it's just to pierce his heart, it has a condition that makes it almost impossible. No woman can pierce it. But in this world, the men can't get magical powers, only women. So, no one can actually defeat King Gororo, except nobody gave this memo to Ichi. Ichi fights King Gororo and manages to outsmart him and complete the challenge, and in something that the story tells us only has 0.001% of happening, he becomes a witch himself, all complete with sudden wardrobe change. And with that, the chapter ends. 
So that's probably the most hyped up manga of the year so far, other than maybe uh, Astro Royale. Did it live up to the hype? Yeah, I, I'd say for the most part it does. It's not perfect, but it's a pretty solid first chapter. It has a perfect balance of good character exploration and world building exposition. Throughout the story, we get to learn about Ichi, who Ichi is, what's his personality, his needs, his goals, and even his backstory, which isn't explored too much, leaving a lot of space for us to learn more about it, but giving us at least enough for us to be able to connect with the character. And the world is unique enough. While visually it reminds me a lot of which had of Lear, I think that's just an unavailable fact of making a fantasy manga about witches, especially one that is almost as beautiful as Witch Hat has Lear. But the comparisons between the two really end at the visuals. The power system is fairly different between the two, and I think it's also fairly different from what you'd expect a manga about witches to be. Uh, but that said, while the ability to gain powers is, is interesting and unique, the powers themselves may feel a bit more generic when compared to their rival ring battle shonens in Shonen Jump. And it's these powers that I think the first chapter really drop the ball, as you don't really get to see much of them, really. Sure, Lady Daskara is the main witch in this chapter, seems to have a sword that explodes and she creates barriers, although uh, creating barriers seems to be a power that all the witches have, and Ichi seems to create explosions as well, but those are just very generic abilities. A theory that I do have that maybe Lady Descaras doesn't have like a magic of her own yet. She seems to be hunting for King Uroros, uh, and we don't really know as of yet if uh, she can have like multiple magic powers or just one. There's a lot of we don't know. I mean, th this is just the first chapter. But I think that if you're going to give us examples of powers like Breeze, Iceberg, Bonfire, you have to show us at least one interesting power in use. As it stands, the battle was easily the weakest part of this chapter, which can be a problem because this is clearly going to be a full-on battle shonen. Maybe it can be a bit more on the adventure side, but it's gonna be a battle shonen. That said, the foundation for more interesting powers and fights is here, so we just need to explore that in the next following chapters. The other one thing that I want to talk about this manga is the tone of it. More specifically, I think there was a tonal shift between the first and the second half of this manga, uh, especially with King Hurodos. It's not too drastic overall, but the first time we see Hurodos, he looks like this huge, majestic, mysterious, and kinda dark figure. The way that it is drawn and presented, and the way that Ichi talks about it, it almost gives it a Lovecraftian feel to it. And then when we finally meet him, it's pretty comedic in nature. The second half is really goofy in general, actually. And it's not that it doesn't work, uh, because it does. The jokes are funny and the characters' expressions do wonders to sell it all, but I can't lie and say that I didn't expect something else based on the first half of this manga. So, will it survive, though? Well, in a very rare instance in this channel, I'm gonna say, yeah. I think it will. Now, Sky Fantasy is currently very popular thanks to titles like Freeran, Digimon Meshi, and We Chatted Lear, and I think it's a very good bet to put this on right now. And in the magazine, we just lost My Hero Academia, and we're about to lose Jujutsu Kaisen in just a couple of weeks, so we just opened two big spots in it. But more than that, I think people legitimately want this manga to succeed. I think a lot of people are gonna read and buy the first volume just to support the Suzaki because of what happened through Act Age. And I'm pretty sure that'll be enough to keep the manga afloat, at least in its initial phase. The big question is if the duo will be able to grab and keep this audience for the long run, but we're talking about a duo that has shown and has proven to be able to do that, so I do have faith in them. We'll just have to see, though. There'll be two more series of beating in the next couple of weeks, and if you want to know my opinions on them, why not subscribe? And if you want to know my first thoughts on all the series in Shonen Jump since 2021, check the playlist on the left, and if you watch it till here, thank you very much, and I'll see you next video.